What is up, guys? Thank you so much for checking out another Guido stacking video. I really appreciate that. I'm actually going to be doing remakes of a lot of the precious metal guides that I did a few years back. Um, I'm sure most of you experienced stackers, if you just happen to check this video out out of curiosity, uh, know how much the market has changed for precious metals uh, over the last year alone. And some of these guides are about two, three years old. So I figured it's about time to really um, remake some of those guides because the strategies have changed and uh, the prices have definitely changed. And it's about that time to remake these guides to fit the current market. Now, the videos that I made in the past, a lot of the strategy is pretty much the same and a lot of the information is pretty much the same. Some things won't change, but um, there's still a lot of updated information that I wanna put into a new silver stacking guide and that is what I'm gonna do for you guys today. With that being said, let's get right into the video. So as most of you know, I work at an LCS and we get a lot of new customers coming in and just full of confusion, where to start, what to buy, what's what, what's collectible, what's for stacking, um, pretty much the normal questions that any beginner stacker is going to have, we get customers coming into the store. They have no idea where to start and that's part of the job at working at an LCS is to guide them to start buying the right thing according to what they want to accomplish. So in order for any of the information that I'm about to give you to be really worthwhile, you have to first think about what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And a lot of it has to do with your goals and it has to do with your mentality. The more you have faith in silver, the more you should buy the silver. Now, I don't suggest only buying silver. There's other things you could put your money in uh, that will make money faster. If that's what you're looking for, you have stocks, you got Bitcoin that is a little bit of a gamble, but once again, you can make more money off of Bitcoin than silver. Silver is more of a long-term asset and it has a lot of things to offer that stocks, Bitcoin and other investments just don't have. Which I'll mention throughout the video, some of the perks of buying silver and adding it to your portfolio. Now, everything I'm telling you has to be teetered to your specific mentality and your specific amount of money you want to invest into silver. Now, a lot of silver stackers in this community don't like to call silver an investment. I still call it an investment because um, of a lot of different reasons, but I won't get into that. That's going to be for a whole nother video. So here we have some assortment of silver that you will definitely run into. And I'm going to give you guys a couple tools that could help you make a decision as far as buying at the right price and the right place. I'm going to try and get as much information in this video as possible for you guys to really get your feet wet and ready to go to start buying silver today. If you have the money, if you have the confidence today, I want to give you the confidence to buy. Um, I do also want to mention that there's a lot of regurgitated information out there on silver stacking. It's a lot of the same information that you're going to hear over and over but at the same time it's good to get other people's perspectives so i do suggest uh subscribing to a lot of different youtube channels to get all different perspectives and then put your own spin on those perspectives it's only going to help you in the long run if you really want to get good at stacking silver so here we go guys how do you start what do you buy what's what what's the premium the first thing I want to mention, and this is not a paid sponsorship, this is me telling you from advice, a great place to start would be findbullionprices.com. This is not a sponsored thing. I'm not paid to say it. It's a tool that a lot of us in the silver community use to get an idea of prices online. Now, especially now in 2021, the best deals you're going to find are most likely going to be from your coin shop, your local coin shop. A term you're going to hear a lot is LCS. 
and they are going to give you probably the best deal on any silver, better than the online dealers, because the online dealers have to pay fees. If you use a credit card, you're going to pay more. They have to ship the product. A lot of different things go into um, their prices. So they have a website that costs money and all that stuff, whether you see it or not, ends up being um, added to how much you're paying for the silver. So most of the time, an LCS will be cheaper. Now, I'm not saying every time, if you're in a secluded area or don't have an LCS close by or um, there's only one LCS for the whole town or city, that LCS may be a little bit more expensive. So um, with that being said, you gotta do your online shopping, make sure you shop around and there is tons of really good, reputable online dealers you can buy from. And sometimes if you don't do your research, you could buy the same coin from one dealer for two to $3 more than you would have bought it from another dealer. So you really need to uh, do your research, check all the dealers, and make sure you're getting the best price possible because two to three dollars will start to add up. Believe it or not, if you plan on doing this for a while, two to three dollars at a time really will start to add up. Things have changed a lot. We have silver that's way more expensive than when I made my original uh, beginner's guide. And not only that though, that is not even the most important part. The most important part are the premiums. So a premium, let's say silver is $25 and the price of a coin is $29. That means that coin has a $4 premium. A premium is basically the extra money on top of just the silver value. So $4 is the difference between 29 and 25. Sorry for oversimplifying that, but I really wanna make sure you understand that because that is a term you will hear a lot. Now, especially when you're shopping, you need to understand premium. So I really wanna make sure you get it. Now, Silver Eagles used to be considered basically standard bullion. They make millions and millions of Silver Eagles and millions and millions of Silver Maples, which is the Canadian version of their government-backed bullion. And this is something else that you really need to understand if you want to get into silver stacking. And that is the difference between a government-backed piece of silver versus a non-government-backed piece of silver. This is probably the best example I could possibly give you guys. And another thing, usually government-backed pieces of silver will be called coins, whereas generic silver, which means it's not government-backed, will be called rounds. And the difference, even though they're both round, is one has a denomination and the other doesn't. For an example, which you're probably gonna see these very often floating around, these are very popular rounds. They are not made by the US Mint, they are not government backed, and a lot of different private mints make these. They're only worth, basically, it's silver content. And that's what makes them generic silver. And here's the example I wanna give you. And you need to know the difference between a round and a coin, and that is it. One has a denomination and is government backed. The other one is not. And here's the example. So this generic one, as you can see, they're very, very similar. Now the one on the left is actually made by the US Mint. And here's the difference on the two coins. And I'm sorry, the coin and the round. See, I just did it. The coin in the round, so the coin is on the left. One of the things is the year. Most, not always, this is not a defining uh, separation between a coin and a round, but most rounds will not have a year. So this one has a year. Uh, government-backed silver will have a year. So uh, if it doesn't have a year, you already know it's not government-backed, but this is how you really tell. And this is where the difference comes in between the two. So I flip it around. You have right there at the bottom, $1, which means the US Mint made this. Generic silver is not allowed to put a denomination or a monetary value on the coin like this. They're not allowed to say it's a dollar. Can't do that. So if you see $1, $2, $5, $50, anything like that, that means it is government backed. You're probably gonna see like $50, 
more with gold. Usually silver is in the one or two dollar range. But so there it is. Um, in God we trust, one dollar. This is a government minted coin. And you will pay more for government minted coins. And the reason for that is because the government is putting their monetary stamp on it, one dollar value, meaning they are certifying that it is what it says it is. It is pure silver, it is made by the US Mint, and that is the difference. And a lot of people rather have government-backed silvers, which is why uh, eagles, silver eagles, Canadian maples, Britannias, Australian kangaroos, kookaburras, uh, koalas, all those coins are all government backed and people prefer that because they are recognizable um, and because of the longevity, which is a, another very important thing when it comes to silver stacking, the longevity of something. So in the recognizability goes together with the longevity usually. So, so there you go. This is a generic round. You'll most likely pay way less for these than anything government backed. That being said, people will pay extra for government backed silver. So that I'm talking in terms of when you sell. So I'm sure you're already thinking, why would you buy government backed if it's more expensive if you could just buy generic silver and it's cheaper? That comes down to your strategy. When you go to sell, so like I said, I work in an LCS. Someone comes in with generic silver, most likely we're gonna pay around spot, maybe a dollar over spot at the most. And that's only if you, you bring in a ton. We do the opposite. You would think that if you bring a lot of silver, they would pay less because you would have to front more money. It's actually the opposite. You bring a lot of silver, you get a better price. So, um, and then if you were to bring in silver eagles, we would pay like two, three, two or three dollars more over spot. So you do get some of that premium back when you go to sell, if you do it through an LCS. I always suggest that you sell privately, but it is very hard to get started to sell privately, which is a whole other video I have if you wanna check it out. So keep that in mind. You will get some of the premium back when you go to sell to you know your LCS, if you're trading in government-backed silver, they usually do pay more, so the premium is there when you go to sell. But within each category, so we have government-backed silver, we have rounds, generic rounds, generic bars is another thing I'll get into in a minute. We have junk silver, and within each of these categories, let's say you decide that you wanna buy government-backed silver, nothing specific, just something that is backed by the government. You have a lot of different options, and the Silver Eagles at the moment are by far the most expensive out of all the government-backed coins you could possibly buy. So if you don't care that it's American or Australian or British or French or whatever, Canadian, then you should do shopping within the government-backed coins and buy the cheapest one. So when I made a video saying not to buy these American Eagles because the premium was outrageous, I was saying to buy silver maples instead because there was literally a $5 difference between the two. And that is massive because maples are arguably <laughs> um, just as popular, if not more popular than uh, silver eagles. And that's where a lot of your mentality and your strategy comes in because, uh, you know, are you willing to pay an extra $5 for basically the same thing. They're both one ounce of silver, they're both government backed, and they're both equally uh, recognizable. So why would you pay $5 more and not wait until there's a good buying opportunity on the Silver Eagles? So do your shopping, even within the government backed silver, make sure you're buying the best government backed silver for the best price, and uh, you'll be okay when it comes to that. Then you got other options. Within the junk silver, now junk silver is a term we use. You could also call it uh, constitutional silver. And it is 90% silver. And these are the three variations you're most likely going to see. There's a couple extra variations that I don't have here because you're most likely not going to run into them. They're older. 
uh, therefore more expensive and not really good for stacking. Once you start buying some of these older half dollars, you're going to start spending some more money. So let me get all three in my hand. I'm trying to find one specific one. I don't know where I put it. There it is. Okay, so these are basically the three that you're going to run into when you're buying um, half dollars. And there's only one you really need to pay attention to what you're doing, and that is the Kennedy, which I'll tell you in a second. So you got the Kennedys right there, halves. You got the Walk in Liberty halves. Now, if you buy these, most likely they're going to be probably even more worn than the one I'm showing you. These are older, and sometimes they will cost more. If they're in better condition, they're definitely going to cost more. So keep that in mind. Uh, you're leaning towards more collectability if you start buying the BU ones, which is um, uncirculated, really nice, bright, shiny versions of these, you're gonna end up paying more and you're no longer stacking, you're going more towards the collecting. So keep that in mind with the Walk-In Liberties. Then you got the Franklins, and these are also pretty much standard bullion. And once again, now this is a nice one that I have. This is a proof, a special strike that makes it ultra shiny. You're gonna pay more for that kind of stuff, but um, if you get a worn one, you know, you can get them pretty much the same price as the Kennedy halves. But if you start getting coins like this, just like the walk in Liberties, the one I just showed you right here, you start getting nicer ones, you're going to start paying more. So keep that in mind, especially with these two types of half dollars. Now you got to be careful with the Franklin, I'm sorry, with the Kennedys, which are these, these only in 1964 which you see right there, were these 90%, and there's a lot of scams on eBay especially, of people trying to sell you 40% versions. So 1965 to 1970, these were 40%, not 90. Only 1964 is 90% silver. So keep that in mind and make sure you don't get scammed uh, if you're buying on eBay. Now, the going price of these is about $26 per dollar. And this is usually how we figure out the price of constitutional or junk silver, however you wanna call it, is by the dollar. So if you see 26X, that means for every dollar of this stuff, you're gonna pay $26. So if you start buying privately on Instagram, Facebook, which I do suggest, but also be very, very, very careful. There's a lot of scams. Um, if you see, for an example, 20X, what does that mean? That means every dollar is 20 bucks. Whether it's in quarters, so four quarters would be 20 bucks right there. So that'll be 20 bucks. These are 90% quarters. And I'll get to that in a minute because uh, there's some dates you need to learn on those. But uh, that's how you do the math on these. Um, whenever they say, usually, I go on the dealers and I look up what they're going for by typing in $10 face and they'll pull up these Kennedys or the, the Franklins or the Walking Liberties and you'll see they're going for about $260. So you divide that and obviously what do you get? You get 26 per dollar. So it's 26 X. All right. And then if you want to know exactly how much silver you're buying, because this is 90% silver, these these coins, these quarters, those halves I was just showing you, I told you they were 90%. And then you got dimes and quarters from 1964 and below. So for an example, 63, 62, so on and so forth, 61, 60, 59, 40, anything lower than 64 means they are 90% silver. And the best way you can actually tell is if you turn them on their side, they will actually uh, be all silver. And I'm trying to show you, it's not doing any justice for it, but um, if you do that, maybe over here, you can see that they're actually silver. There's no copper inside those, um, those ridges there. There we go, kind of, okay. So you can do that and then double check the dates. If you have a whole roll of them, let's say you're just going through your change, there's a possibility you can find them in your change, believe it or not. Um, you just put them like this, and look through all the sides, and if you see any that are just silver, then you know there's a chance that could be um, actually 90% silver. And uh, double check the date, because sometimes the copper doesn't always come through. 
So just double check the dates, but at least it'll save you a lot of time if you start going through a lot of change. And just like the generic rounds versus the coins, we have bars. Now, most governments, actually, I can't even think of one. Governments usually don't make these bars. You won't see a denomination on these. Most of them, I don't think there is. Um, there's like one ounce, uh, one ounce silver bars that you find that do have a denomination and they actually are government backed, but that is a rarity and that is made by Perth Mint. Don't get confused by those. If you see them, they got the dragon on them, but, uh, big bars like this won't have a denomination. If you're buying these bars, which is probably my favorite piece of silver to buy are these 10 ounce bars. And one thing I'm going to tell you from experience Whenever there's a shortage of physical bullion or um, if a lot of the investors are moving from stocks into precious metals, you're going to notice that the 10 ounce bar is the first thing to sell out. And it happened again this time when there was a shortage on silver. They've all gone and the premiums have gone through the roof. They are expensive now. So now I don't really suggest it because you're going to pay like 340 bucks. If you do the math, that is uh, $34 an ounce and it's no longer worth it. For that amount of money, you can buy government-backed silver, which is more worth it if you're gonna pay that kind of money and pay 34 an ounce. You might as well just get silver eagles at 34 a pop. That's just my opinion. Now, on the same token, if you do happen to see one at a great price, I highly suggest buying some of these 10 ounce bars, Sunshine Mint happens to be one of my favorites, which is this right here, but there's different variations. Just be careful. And this is the first time I'm gonna mention counterfeits and fakes, which there are of silver eagles and uh, other coins and rounds. So you gotta be really careful who you're buying from. But um, any of the other generic bars, you gotta be really careful. There's one with a buffalo on it and a Morgan dollar on it, which I'm gonna show you a Morgan in a minute. Uh, those can be heavily counterfeited, and this is why I always recommend these to beginners. This Sunshine Mint 10 ounce bars, if bars is what you wanna do, regardless of the price, you're like, you know what, I only want bars. I suggest starting out with these Sunshine Mint bars to get your feet wet until you uh, become familiar with silver and the testing methods and stuff like that. So. The reason why is this little circle right here. All you gotta do is buy this little plastic card and no one is gonna fake this, guys. So this is the way to go. You put the plastic card over and it shows you a holographic valid. And then if you do this and put the card, it shows like a starburst, really, really neat. And uh, actually, I might have one. And I do, so let's do this. I'm gonna show you guys. I'd rather show you what I'm talking about, pretty cool and really great for beginners. So here it is. Uh, as you can see, boom, it says valid. There we go, I'm gonna bring it into the light. Valid. And then you flip it, so I just flipped it over, and there's a starburst. And that is, you can't see that without the card. There it is, it's gone. And uh, that is <laughs> almost impossible to replicate and pretty expensive if someone were to try. So it is a safe bet to buy these, but make sure it does have this circle in the back. If you're gonna buy these, the ones that don't have a circle are the older ones, and those are actually heavily counterfeited, which is exactly why they created this, this security feature in the first place. So make sure, if you're gonna buy these Sunshine Mint, all of their new products have it. One ounce coins, or I'm sorry, one ounce rounds, one ounce bars, five ounce, all of their stuff has this new feature. Make sure it has it if you wanna go this route and uh, make sure that it's real. So you can buy that card on eBay. They sell them for like, I don't know, 20 bucks, somewhere around there. You could buy them. They're, you know, a little investment, let's just say, to make sure your stuff's real. If you start heavily buying Sunshine Mint stuff, I do highly recommend them. If I find them on Amazon, I'll actually put a link in the description to so take you right to it. You can buy them on Amazon. All right, so let's keep going. Obviously, I wanna get as much information as possible. I am not worried about time on this video. I'm trying to get everything I can think of at the moment to get you guys stacking. So I am taking my sweet, sweet time with this video. The next thing you're probably gonna see is uh, these Morgans. And this is another thing that's gonna get really confusing for you if you start going this route. 
Now, back in the day, you could get some Morgans for pretty cheap. They've gotten expensive. Now, Morgans and Peace Dollars are 90% silver, and they are actually short of an ounce. They're 0 0.7734, somewhere in that vicinity of a troy ounce, which means they are shy of a troy ounce, but you will pay um, pretty much the same price as a full ounce of silver. So that's something you need to take into consideration. A lot of people buy them just to have some because they're cool, they're old. For an example, this is from 19, uh, what is it, 34? That's an older one. Then the Morgans got, are even older. This is a 1889. My eyes are not great. Something in there, 88. So um, they buy it for that reason because they are older. But the reason why it gets confusing, one, there's all kinds of prices. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can end up spending way more. You could burn a lot of money messing around with these peace dollars, Morgan dollars, um, that older silver that could possibly be collectible. You could start burning a lot of cash. So I don't suggest buying any of these until you're way more familiar. Do a lot of research on them before you start buying. But I do want to bring them up because you will see them. And um, not only that, if you do want to start getting into them, there's a lot of variables you need to take into consideration. I'm just going to tell you a couple. So the condition is one. Uh, like this, Peace Dollar is a little bit beat up. You see how it's kind of worn and it's got some you know, scratches on it. It's not really appealing. And the feathers are worn here and you know what I mean? So you're gonna pay less for that, unless it's a special date. And that's a whole nother thing too. But uh, if you wanna start getting into dates and mint marks, I'll put a link, buy a red book. I highly suggest it. It tells you all the prices, all the mintages of all these coins. And you can actually get a really, actually, you know what? Even if you don't do this right away, I suggest buying the red book to at least have it as a, a frame of reference. It's really good to at least have. So you can look these Morgans up and look up these peace dollars before you buy and uh, you will know if it's a good buy or not. But the condition is really what you need to focus on now when you're starting out. But I do suggest buying that red book. I put the link in the description if you wanna buy it. So this one, as you can tell, is a little bit better, right? So if I were to buy one of these, they're both the same year, I believe. Which one do you think is gonna be more expensive? This one, right? You see the hair? More details in the hair than this one. This one's worn. So obviously this is gonna be more expensive than the other if they have the same exact mint mark and all that, right? And the same thing for Morgans. This is a nice Morgan. This is the nicest coin of the three. So this is gonna cost more than all three of them. It's got the shininess, it's got detail. And for that reason, you're gonna end up paying more regardless of the mint year, the mint mark and things like that. When you start getting into mint marks, um, condition of coins like that, uh, and years and all that stuff, you're leaning towards more of a collector than an investor buying for silver only, like a stacker. So, and that's a whole nother thing. If you wanna do that collectible stuff, that could be an investment as well, but it, it usually takes more time uh, to make money doing that. So just keep that in mind, but it would be cool if you're stacking for your kids or your grandkids to pass down some of those really older coins like this Morgan from the 1800s, really, really cool. But just keep in mind, you will pay more for those. You definitely will. Now within these and pretty much almost across the board, there's a word I wanna tell you just so you're aware, if you're going more towards the silver stacking side, but you also like coins and older stuff, there's a term you really should familiarize yourself with, and that is the word coal. I'm gonna put it on the screen, coal, C-U-L-L. -L. That means that the coin is worth only its silver content. The coin is really beat up, really worn, scratched, polished. Something has been done to the coin that completely ruined all its collectability. But I'm telling you because coals usually have some good deals and sometimes you can get coal eagles, believe it or not. Newer bullion, uh, pure silver that are coal. So they'll be all messed up, scratched up. 
somebody painted on them and then the paint's coming off, whatever. And you could buy coal silver eagles, there is such thing, or coal peace dollars or coal morgans. And sometimes they are a pretty good deal, believe it or not. So do your math, figure out how much weight of silver is in the morgans, how much weight is in the peace dollars, and do your math according to you know the price that they're selling. Just any research before you buy. Don't do any impulse buys whenever you're stacking. None, zero, research everything. Just don't throw away your money. And it's so easy to do is why I'm stressing this. It is so easy to really throw away money in this stacking game. So anything that you buy, do not impulse buy. I promise you do not impulse buy. Just do your research, a quick Google search on any of this information and you will find what you're looking for. I guarantee it. The internet is full of information on coins and purities and all kinds of stuff. So keep that in mind when you're shopping around. Another thing I highly suggest not doing, I wanna throw this in here. I probably should have said this earlier in the video, but do not buy any fractional silver, none, zero. It's a waste of money. It is a waste. Now, if you don't care um, and you really just want small pieces of silver for whatever reason, then fine, but you are gonna pay big premiums on anything smaller than an ounce. A half ounce, most likely the premium is gonna be high. And if you go smaller than a half ounce, I mean, you're gonna really start paying big money for fractional silver. If you're gonna buy silver, buy big pieces of silver like this or a full ounce. Don't go fractional at all. If you're one of those prepper stackers that believe that you're gonna have to barter with this stuff, then I would suggest buying dimes, quarters. This stuff here is 90% and the resale value is great on it. So if that day never comes, which we all hope it doesn't, and you never have to barter with this stuff, you will get the money back easy. There's always buyers for this stuff and you will have no problem getting all your money back or even making money. Whereas you were to buy a you know $100,000 worth of fractional silver, you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to sell that stuff. Nobody really wants it, so don't buy it. If you want fractional, buy some silver dimes, silver quarters, silver shot, which is this little uh, beads of silver that you can buy. The dealers have it, it's called silver shot, S-H-O-T. Um, you could do that if you believe in bartering. Buy 10 ounces of that stuff, and if you really need to barter with it, you can weigh it out, and boom, there you go but don't buy any one tenth ounce silver, any of that stuff, don't. And the very final piece of the guide, and, I, and this is a portion that a lot of people get confused with and this is why I gotta bring it up. And uh, to be honest with you, no matter how I started this video, there's so many important things that it, it doesn't matter where I told this information in the video, it's all important because you need to know everything if you're gonna start. You can't just know some things. So hopefully you're still watching to this point. So there is something called semi numismatics. And if you go online, any of the dealers, you're gonna see tons of this stuff. And that is this collectible silver stuff. So once again, kind of the same thing I said about the peace dollar and the Morgans with the mint marks and the rare dates and things like that. It's almost the same thing, only on a smaller level because some of these Morgans if it's a CC Morgan Carson City, which is a very rare mintage, well, not very rare, but the highly desirable mintage, you're gonna pay 200 bucks. Now with some of this stuff, it's not that expensive, but you are gonna pay more. And what this is, is brand new silver. They just minted, they put all these designs on it. In a way, it's kind of gimmicky, but at another, and if you look at it another way, it's kind of cool for your kids. This is a good way to get your kids into this. Um, uh, if you want to spend time with your kids, getting into the hobby together, this is pretty much why they do it. One of the reasons why. But you can also flip these. You can make money on these things. And that's another reason why a lot of people buy them. So semi-numismatic just basically means it's a new coin. There's a limited mintage that they make. So there's only uh, a few of them. For an example, I think this... Uh, I don't remember the mintage on this, maybe 50,000 coins, which if you consider that worldwide, 
It's not that much, but at the same time, it kind of is. Um, that's something you'll learn over time, what a good mintage is, what the popular uh, series are. So they make series out of these coins, and uh, that's how they get you. They're basically gimmicks, but I like them. I have some, and my strategy is I save one of the, the designs I really like, and then some of the series, I continue to buy each one as the releases come. It does, in a way, keep you um, kind of on your toes. And what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, <laughs> disciplined, I guess, because you're buying each one of the series. So you're kind of setting yourself up to continue to buy silver, even though it's not the most optimal prices because these are going to be more expensive since they are limited and they are gimmicky. And that's the whole point of the, the mints making them is to make money off of you and their silver. Um, you can make money on these though. For an example, this is the reason why I grabbed this Spider-Man, not because I'm, I like Spider-Man, but uh, this coin, when it was first released, was, and this is an example I'm gonna give you of these types of coins. You're gonna see them all the time. All kinds of different designs and stuff. And this is where people get confused because there's so many options, and it comes from these. These newer releases is what, it just makes everything confusing. So. And then I'm going to talk about other stuff too that makes it confusing. But for now, this is what I got. So um, they released these. They were, I don't know, maybe $30. So there was a $5 premium or $6 premium, maybe even more than that, to be honest, when um, these were released in uh, 2016, I believe. I think it is 2016. Yep. So I paid $35 or whatever it was. Now... This series has continued to this day. So it's been five years and the series is still going on. They're still releasing these Marvel coins, releases. And this coin, because it was the first one of the series, is now worth over a hundred bucks. If you go on eBay, if you go on Facebook, Instagram, anyone that's selling these, if you could find them, and that's what makes them valuable is that they're kind of hard to find at the same time. Um, they're over a hundred bucks. So I actually made about $70 on this one coin and that is the perk of a lot of these semi numismatic coins But also it's a double-edged sword. It's not always the case You could buy some coins that are a complete bust So they release a coin you pay 40 bucks next thing, you know two years down the road. It's being sold for 25 bucks it loses its value if the series is not popular. So what drives the price of those is strictly the popularity and the longevity of the series. So another thing that happens, let's just say that this series ends today, right? They have a shelf life. I don't wanna hold this coin for too long, right? If I wanna make money on it, if I wanna hold it just for the silver, that's a whole different thing or pass it down. But what ends up happening five years down the road is People forget about this series because you get new stackers coming in, you get new collectors coming in, and people just kind of forget. They don't go looking for them to buy them. The interest is gone, and there's no one jumping into the series anymore. So they lose their value. They basically become standard bullion, and you can actually lose a lot of money if you get stuck with a bunch of them. And that is the case. So if you go on eBay, which I don't really suggest buying on eBay when you're first starting out. There's too many scams. But if you do go look on eBay just for the sake of looking, you'll see a ton of different designs, all kinds of silver. You type in silver coins and just search, you'll see all kinds of series that they've done way back when and designs, vintage silver, all that stuff. And now vintage silver, silver is popular, but... A lot of that stuff was probably more expensive at the time because people were actually buying it and chasing the series. And now these people are almost stuck with these coins. You'll see the same coins from the same sellers just rotating over and over and over, just can't sell it because nobody knows what it is. People are not gonna buy what they don't understand. And that is almost the case with all this stuff. You wanna understand it. And uh, that's why a lot of people like this junk silver because it's very easy to understand and it's very hard to fake. So that's why they like it. The Kennedys 
you know it's 1964, it's 90% silver. There's nothing crazy about it. And there's not even any collectible Kennedys. There's no rare dates, no rare mintages, no errors, stuff like that. It's very simple. And for that reason, um, and besides the fact that there's millions and millions of them, uh, people really like them and they have longevity. So that's why people like the junk silver. So, but yeah, when I first started stacking, I saw the same coins over and over and over and I didn't know what half of them were. And I, you know, now I come to realize it was people trying to sell things from back in the day that they just can't move anymore on in, on eBay. They just can't move it. So make sure if you start buying some of this, it, you got two options. You either sell it at the right time, it's all about timing. And if you wanna learn more about coin flipping, I have a video on that. Um, I don't wanna go too far into detail, but uh, there you have a shelf life. You gotta time it right. So either sell it at the right time or hold it forever and pass it down to your kids because at the end of the day, it's always gonna be worth at least the silver content and your kids are gonna get it. So that's what really matters. So that's pretty much it guys. This is, I think, a pretty good guide to get you going. I hope you understood a lot of this stuff and um, watch as many videos and as much content as you possibly can on this stuff. The more you know, the more you're gonna save, the better you're gonna be at it and the more successful you're gonna be at it. And one of the biggest rules when shopping around, especially on eBay <laughs> or Etsy or Pinterest or uh, Instagram or Facebook, if something is too good to be true, meaning the price is too cheap, most likely it is a scam. Keep that in mind. Whenever you see something that is way cheap, listen, you will not find this stuff at a price that is below the cost of silver. It does not happen, even private. So if you see it, be skeptical. Don't buy there's a lot of scams unfortunately in this community there's a lot of people trying to take advantage of new people so be smart and careful who you're buying from what you're buying and always do your research before making any type of purchase make sure you are 100 percent confident in your buy and at the end of the day you'll see that that's going to end up going a long way for you so anyways guys Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys later.